what was the, the inspiration behind it all together and uh, how did you get Peter Mullen involved? I just like wrote a, I wrote the script based on a, a sort of, I don't know, a, a character, a little bit like, um, you know, there's elements of my my dad in him, you know, in this guy, and I wanted to make a little film that dealt with somebody with my my dad's kind of personality, you know, because um, I was still trying to make sense and understand him a little bit, which doesn't mean that every incident in the film my dad did, but it just means that there were some things that I wanted to understand a little bit better or at least explore and that was it I just wrote it in less than two hours you know it wasn't a very not a very long film anyway but just belted through it and just thought I, I need to direct something and I, and I wrote it specifically for me to direct and also um, is that a, a path that you see yourself uh, following more because we did a lot of uh, the background history checkup and maybe you've got a, a first one to talk about yeah man yeah I'll go a bit like directing, yeah, yeah, definitely more of that. Um, I, I really, I really got a lot out of it, yeah. Good stuff. Um, but, but short film, though, um, people seem to see uh, short films as a stepping stone normally to a feature film. But yeah. Do you see it all together as a column card, maybe pushing that concept into a feature, or like that? It's, it, it's quite, it's quite cynical, isn't it, to see it as that I'm just going to do this and. And it's going to lead me to bigger things, but it, the, the, there's always that little. Uh, for me, it was just that idea of I didn't I didn't want to jump into a feature film because it's a massive commitment, two or three years of your life, and I just wasn't ready at this point. To, well, I say I wasn't ready. I didn't have the thing that was strong enough for me to think I'm going to commit myself to this for two years. You know, none of the ideas were, were kind of there enough to make me want to do that. But um, it was a, a chance to just. I'm trying to look at it like an exercise, but it was just uh, it was just a little tentative foot in the water just to say, uh, you know, can I do this? Because I criticised so much about direction that I'd received in some of my films and people who considered themselves directors who I thought couldn't, weren't, didn't have the capability to direct you to the nearest shop, you know. Not actors, directors. No, not actors, directors. So um, I was just a bit like, I want to put my money where my mouth is, you know, and if you're going to do it, do it. So I just cracked on with it and thought, I'll have a go. Well, we also noticed that you uh, started off the, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the first thing we, we saw that you did with Shane Meadows was a uh, few tears for Jimmy Profit. Well, that was like, came after my first film I did with Shane. That was just during a period where I was on the dole and that, and Shane had some downtime. So we used to just go out in the, in the car and pick up wigs and just shoot things on the cuff, never have a story, never have anything, sometimes not even a character, then you'd put a pair of teeth in and go, oh yeah, this, and then a voice would come and then you'd go and make a little film about him that day and that's what we did with a lot of them around the time. And Jimmy Prophet was one of them that just was an improvised piece, it was like, well, let's go down the boxing club and do something, yeah, and it was just an improvised thing to camera. I never thought anyone was ever going to really see him, I just thought it was, you know, a little sketchbook type of thing, but... They've since appeared on stuff, and I see them as, I don't personally see them as completed bits of work, just as like a look into the sketchbook, but it's a nice way to see how, how sort of, you know, if you want to do it out, it's not, just go and do it, pick up your camera, get your pals and have a, have a pop at it, you know. With, with that in mind then, Dog All Together worked really well, as you see, we saw the Andrei copy, but even that yeah. uh, worked really well. Um, would you see yourself maybe going on and doing further shorts just again to experiment? I've got one more short that I think I'd like to do, and it might be a half hour piece. I don't know how difficult that is to fund, like I've got a half hour piece. I don't know, you know, it seems to be shorts or something a little bit longer. Yeah, it's a bit of a kind of weird area, you know, but... Um, and there's even some thoughts in my mind of extending the characters in Dog all together and it being a, a feature film, or, or at least an hour long. Piece because a lot of people wanted to know where the relationship went with um, Peter's character Joseph and Anita, who Olivia Coleman plays, and what actually went on in the shop when we, we cut away, you know, that, um, and actually what leads Peter to the situation that opens the film, you know. So there was always odd moments that um, could have been, um, could possibly be built upon, and that's something I'm not afraid of either, you know, developing that and even making a feature but having some of the same scenes back in there again, you know. 
then with Olivia Coleman, you worked before with her on Compass. Yeah. Is that how you, you got to know each other? Because it seems like you uh, noticed that you do quite a lot in the way of music videos and stuff as well. Is yeah, I've done a few of them. Just friends like, or people who Yeah, the you? music videos came up. Um, they just usually it's when you ain't got much doing, and you know, and someone rings you up and had your fancy doing a pop video, and you're like, um, who is it? Who is it for? But I had a great time doing the Maloko video. That was a, a good bit of fun, and I loved the director on it. Um, and then the, um, Jamie Thraves came through with a Coldplay one. I said, oh, I like the lowdown, you know, and let's go and meet Jamie then. And they come like that, and the Arctic Monkeys one was the same, you know. And I actually got to write the Arctic Monkeys one, which was cool because. Yeah, and I thought, oh, I've got an idea for that. That's this is good. I've had it for ages. I actually wrote it a couple of years ago for a possible Maloko video, and um, they, they liked it, so we went and did it. And they're just they're like little short films. I don't want to do too many in appearing like the yeah. video kid, you know. But I, I do enjoy knocking about. And Olivia just came around because of Hot Fuzz. I met her on Hot Fuzz and just uh, thought she was great. Really good gal. Um, and I sort of thought, there's, there's more to Olivia, you know, not in some secret kind of dark way, but there's, I'm thinking, oh, I'd like to see Olivia in some other stuff now. Maybe dramatically, um, there might be something interesting for her, you know, that might be something different to the comedies I mean, that she really is. Comedy roles that she's, uh, yeah, and she's the, the shock to see her in a dramatic role, actually. Like, oh, yeah, and I think she's wonderful in it. And there's a wonderful bit that I kept in where, she, just before she prays for Peter, she sort of takes a breath and hesitates, and there's still an uncertainty. And we're like, "What?" Uh, um, and I, and she says, "Oh, I probably was just trying to remember my line, you know." And I said, "Well, whatever. It, it, it worked fantastically, yeah." Um, quick, not the, the film you're probably best known for, Dead Man's Shoes. Yeah. We had a quick look, and again, IMDb is fantastic for doing research. Uh. Uh, and there was one guy who did the, like the personal reviews of it, and. Uh, this is if all British films were as good as Dead Man's Shoes, we would have an industry. Wow, give that man a ginormous cigar. Yeah, um, following on from that, uh, what's your opinion on like, the UK film industry and in a global situation? It's hard to get it because we have to call it, you know, and I was talking about film this morning and talking about nil by mouth, and we always, I, I was always finding myself referring to it as British film, British filmmakers, and never just filmmakers. Um, it's really weird. I don't know. It's not. It's. I think it's very difficult to get a film made. I mean, luckily with Dead Man's Shoes, we got um, we got into a situation where it became quite a cult. You know, it, it, there's a lot of interest, um, and it, it. You know, DVD and TV really helped us out there because um, cinema. You know, it didn't get the distribution that we needed. Yeah. Yeah. Channel Four. You know, so we always thought, I mean, and we got its life on DVD and television. Um, and you have to think more and more now. We've, I've just done a piece with Shane, and it was like, what should we do with it? You know, should we just make it for, and have it on television, you know, and not think, because you just immediately got an audience. And I don't think anybody makes a film and goes, oh, I hope no one sees this. You want people to see it, but I think we suffer too much. And there's not, I don't know, I just think, I wish there was, there's a lot of people out there who really, really want to make films. You know, they really do, and they're all over YouTube, and they're making them on their phones, and they really want to be filmmakers. Um, and you know, like distribution's tough, and getting like I, you know, I heard that you know after Gary Oldman made Neil by Mouth, he couldn't get the money to make another film. And you just scratch your head then and go, oh well, okay then. There ain't much hope then, is there really? But there are people, there's films like London to, London to Brighton, there are films that break through Red Road that, you know, with people, artists, with real voices that... So the voices are out there, it's just nurturing them and it's always that compromise because I, I think some of our biggest financial successes of movies are, have been some of the worst movies ever made in this country. Um, but they also help other films to get made. <laughs> so I won't ask you any names on that one. No, we all know. <laughs> 